Welcome to the Portage County Safety Council podcast. I'm excited for today's presentation and our special series on the Ohio Safety Council, Ohio Safety Congress and Expo 2023. This expo comes to the state of Ohio every year. Uh, this year it's being held on March 8th through the 10th at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. And we have the opportunity on our podcast channel to interview what we believe are gonna be some of the best speakers at the expo. And joining us today is Renee, who is also part of our Safety Council Steering Committee and was gonna be talking on the topic of safety in a production-driven world. Renee, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Nick. I'm excited to have you here. Tell us a little bit about your topic, kind of broad brush overview. What is this safety in a production driven world? Yeah, so I think there's always this um, kind of battle between the safety department that wants to do all the things safe and the production side that says, you know, we say safety is number one priority, but when it comes down to it, a lot of times production becomes the top priority. And so I've got some things that I've learned over my uh, 20 plus, we'll just leave it at that, years of experience in manufacturing. And I'm so passionate about it and passionate about safety. And so I, I think really this is uh, a great topic to talk about at Ohio Safety Congress. You know, I'm really excited to hear your presentation on this because, you know, we know each other personally from working on the Safety Council together. And you've really kind of built a career and you've grown up the corporate ladder in different aspects of your organization, you know, and I think you bring a unique perspective. So so our under, our listeners understand that. Tell us a little bit about your career growth and, and how you ended up where you are today. Yeah, so it really started, uh, we'll, we'll say just before 2000, and uh, I was in a manufacturing company that um, had had a really strong safety program. It was a global company and had a lot of safety um, opportunities uh, where they'd come in and, and teach us safety every month, and then they would do an annual audit, and I got to be part of that, and so I got to see that, um, that side of safety in, in a manufacturing site. Um, and then a few years later, we had an OSHA visit and it, being part of the engineering department, uh, I was actually getting my mechanical engineering degree at the time. Um, I got to be part of some of the solutions and work with uh, some folks at the BWC to find some really great solutions. And I saw those two sides work together really well to come up with not only a situation that would work really well to keep production going at their high rate, but also to help the safety of those employees and teach them and, and put some things in place to help keep them safe. Um, so then uh, I, I had uh, another company um, offered me a position and I've been here at Kent Elastomer Products ever since. It's been almost 16 years now that I've been here and I can't believe it time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah. Um, so here I started, uh, actually we built a safety program and uh, started kind of from scratch. And I uh, got to do that with all of our, our managers and um, the, you know, from the president to the owner, you know, had to, to have that communication with them um, all the way to our shop employees that had to do the work um, on the shop floor and do it safe within these new parameters of safety that we were teaching them. So. I've really gotten to be on both sides of it, uh, from that engineering side of it. Um, and then a few years ago, I got to the operations side and I was promoted to uh, director of operations. So now I'm on the other side <laughs> and, uh, and my goals are all tied to, you know, production and output and what can, we can get out the door. Um, so, you know, now I've got another point of view uh, on how we're gonna do that. So I, I think I've got some great topics and things we can talk about today. You know, and I think that's what people need to understand. A lot of times there's this disconnect in the world that safety and production are separate. They can't coexist. But the reality is there's a collaboration that can happen there that can make your company be even more successful. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to us a little bit. Don't give away the whole story, but give us the, you know, your top three points that you really hope to drive home in this presentation down at Ohio Safety Congress and Expo. Yeah, great. So um, the first one I'd like to talk about are some some gaps in the safety culture. Um, you know, so one of the things to look at, uh, you know, like you said, I'm not going to give away the whole story, but uh, look at those complainers that are in your plant. Uh, look at the people who are, are saying, you know, things like, oh, it's so hard to work here. Well, ask them why it's hard to work here. And a lot of the times you'll find that there are 
reasons. You know, they, they don't like a certain situation because something in them is telling them, even if they don't know the OSHA code or they don't know the regulations to it, something is saying that it's not a safe space for them. And they, they could be um, communicating that in a way that isn't necessarily saying, hey, OSHA says you have to do this, 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 and this. Here's the training we need. Here are the resources. This is the way it should look. Um, they may, it may come out like, oh, it sucks here. Or <laughs> uh, it may come out like this job is the worst and, and nobody wants to do a certain part of that job. So um, yeah, there's a lot of things you can get out of the, we'll call them complainers for now. You know, and that's so true. I always say this and some safety people hate when I put this out there, but safety at the top level is easy. It's just, it's, it's there. It doesn't take a lot. What takes a lot is digging down and burying into the standards and developing an action plan that's sustainable and enforceable and workable. But the top level of it, everybody can do. We know what's right and what's wrong. And, and I think the culture is a big sign of that. So that's great. What's another piece of the presentation? Yeah, so um, leadership uh, can work together to grow that safety culture. That's, you know, really working with that top brass, the, the leadership, the president, the owner, to make sure that they buy in. And um, two things that, that we really found to be helpful with that um, are finding people that are passionate. So if the leadership can find somebody who is passionate and has a passion for safety or manufacturing or wherever that passion is, um, dig into that and, and, I don't want to say exploit, but really kind of, you know, use that person's talent and passion to, to find the things that they can bring to the company um, and communicate that with the leadership. So communication is the next thing. Um, we had several, uh, several great stories that I'll get to share at Safety Congress about bad communication and how things fell apart really quickly um, because, you know, just simple communication. And so really when it comes to leadership, there's a different language at the top. They're thinking of things differently and, and, and an hour to an hourly employee is different than an hour of a safety meeting to the president of the company because he's looking at that over time and across all the people. And um, so there's some different financial ways we can, we can change our communication skills. You know, I think leadership and leadership communication is so important because there's also the unintentional communication. It's our actions. It's our where we put the pressure sometimes from the top down. Yeah, we really care about safety, but are we putting the pressure on getting the, the product out? And what message does that send behind the scenes that we often miss? So that's that's some great stuff. So the last point, what's the last point you're going to cover in your presentation? Yeah, so really, you know, it's prioritizing and getting the most out of whatever resources you have. Um, you know, there are a ton of things that we can fix to make things safe without spending money and with very little investment of time. Um, we are so fortunate here in the in Ohio to have the BWC, um, you know, to have you guys, Nick, I know that, uh, you know, we've talked about several things, you're a great resource. Um, when I started out, I had a different industrial hygienist and, and she came out constantly and was a great resource. She'd come out and do an audit and we'd spend the next month fixing those little things that we could do. And, you know, some things were a bigger cost, you know, and we had to budget and plan and, and do those things. And if you've got that resource, that's fantastic. But in the beginning, we didn't have that resource. We didn't have that cash flow for that. We didn't have a budget for safety. Uh, we had to really build that and that trust with our leadership that we were really doing things and going to spend that money like it was our money, not just, you know, some big safety slush fund kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we really looked at what programs exist in Ohio, you know, through the BWC, there's a ton of free resources in other places. Um, networking is a great one. Hey, I'll put a plug in for the safety council, go to your safety council and uh, check out all the people at your table. And in, the, in that room, there's a ton of information in that room. You can find answers to almost anything you need in a safety council room. Um, and then prioritize, you know, what can you do? Prioritize in different ways. We'll talk about that um, in the presentation is how do we prioritize things to get the most out of what we can. And, um, you know, there's priorities based on, on budget, priorities based on time, priorities based on importance um, and safety, have risk, uh, um, 
there's priority based on on the risk too. So all of those things go together into that priority. And by adjusting those up and down a little bit, you can get a pretty good safety program with any kind of resources that you have available. Now, I think that's another large obstacle that organizations face is that if I buy a new machine today, I know how many additional widgets it's going to pump out. And I can see what that return on investment is. But when I say, hey, we're going to do this arc flash hazard assessment, or we're going to you know, install this sound baffling throughout the facility to reduce noise levels, that's not as easy to measure because the numbers aren't always right there. So it, it takes some trust in building that leadership relationship. But in the at the end of the day, there, there's lots of studies that show the companies that truly invest in safety, build in a safety program, have some of the best production numbers, some of the best quality numbers, and are some of the you know most superior companies out there. It's just it's getting people to understand that, and 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 I and I get it from a business standpoint. When you can't put do- numbers down on a piece of paper, sometimes it's hard to sell. So you got to learn how to maximize those resources around you. Yeah, and there's a li- there are a lot of resources now to help with that and uh, help help put those things in place to help sell the safety programs. So. You know, and I know you've been a big advocate here in Portage County of the networking of local businesses together and sharing amongst each other, different companies, sharing ideas, sharing resources. And, that, and really, that's what safety is, right? Beg, borrow, steal. That's yep, what we absolutely. do. Absolutely. <laughs> knock on your neighbor's door, right? There's, there's companies all around you that you can work with and share ideas. Yeah. There's so many and and safety people all are in the same boat together. You know, we're all trying to do the best thing with the the limited resources we have and uh, we're all willing to share things. So I haven't met anybody yet. That's not, uh, not sharing every single piece of safety information they have uh, with, with me if I've asked. So, yep, absolutely. Networking is, is definitely key. So as we prepare to head down to Columbus uh, here in about a month or so for Ohio State mm-hmm. Congress, what what do you challenge the listeners? There's some people listening to you right now. What's your one call to action for them? What would you like them to do before they head down to Columbus to get prepared for your presentation? Yeah, to um, you know, really think about what they have as resources first. You know, I think you probably, if you started listing the resources that you have already available, you have more than than you know. Um, there's, you know, your employees within your company, they, they probably know, like we talked about those complainers, you know, a lot of them have already set, um, ideas of how to fix the problems that they, they see every day. Um, so use that resource. You've got managers that have probably, some of them have probably grown up in the company and have been with that problem forever. And they're like, oh yeah, we used to get around it by, X, Y, Z. And so, you know, they probably have some input that they didn't really think of as a safety thing back in the day, but now, you know, maybe that's, that's a solution. Um, You know, like you said, knock on your neighbor's door. The safety council is a great place to meet people. Um, I know that some of the HR people that are going to be with us uh, are also in other organizations that have you know, similar people that are in the same kind of boat, uh, other HR folks that are doing safety too. So, um, you know, that's not always their their training. Uh, the BWC has great resources as far as training goes. Um, you know, I've even had some people at the safety council who I've met come in and do tons of training here. Um, I, you know, I've had um, hazardous communication was done by a, uh, by a person. We've done stress management and um, off shift working. I mean, there's really just a, a lot of different resources for everything from programs to um, uh, audits. You know, they uh, come in and audit audit a, a co- another company uh, sometime. It, that's a really cool thing, and and you get out of it too because then you're like, oh, I wonder if we do that. Like maybe you just didn't mm-hmm. see it in your own plant. So um, yeah, tons of resources, and and none of that really costs money. All of the things I've just mentioned are really free resources or, or pretty inexpensive resources um, that you can do, you know, to improve most of your safety programs. Well, Renee, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast with us today. I'm really excited about your presentation. Um, to remind everybody, Renee is going to be speaking on safety in a production-driven world down at Ohio Safety Congress and Expo, March 8th through the 10th. We hope to see everybody there. Stop in, say hi to Renee, and uh, good luck on your presentation. We'll see you down in Columbus. Thanks, Nick. I'll see you in a couple of weeks down there. All right, everyone, stay safe.